Hi everyone. I need some inspiration. What to do next? I thought I would look at this. I have a little box here and sometimes when I'm playing with things I leave a tiny bit of it in a in a box. Here's some thread, here's some wool. That's an interesting yarn. Tiny bits of material maybe. That's a mess. But you know, I can use that. Um, yeah. So I thought I will look at this for inspiration and do a little tiny, uh, look at you, I think you're, you're silk, I think. Oh, yes. All right, so I'm going to use whatever's in here to make something. I've grabbed a little piece of linen, just because you can, uh, hopefully, I like to experiment to see what you can go through and what you can't. So let's go for, we've got blues. I want to do something bluish. So this is some sort of, people crochet with it, some sort of yarn. Isn't it interesting though? So I just thought I'm going to grab some of that. And I'm going to grab some of this bit here. It's a different colour. And see where it leads me. I don't really expect it will do, oh look at you, aren't you lovely, yeah, that's nice. I don't expect it will do a lot, if I tried to do that, it's not really going to do a great deal, I wouldn't think, I might tack it down. Now you can tell by what comes through to the other side, whether it's working or not, see how bits of it have been poked through, which is quite cool. But also, I could grab a bit of something, I don't know, with some bluey scrap. And if I put that over it, it has even more chance of being melded to the background with that. And I think I could probably use... Uh, I don't know, are you silk or are you cotton? I'm not sure. It'll, it'll do it anyway. Let's try it up here. Well, when I'm needle felting, and uh, this is a needle felt needle, has barbs on it, the barbs go in and push bits of fibre through to the back. You can felt on felt, but I like experimenting with what else I can felt on. This is also called dry felting. You see that? There it is coming through, so I know this is going to work. Let's see how quickly we can make something come together. Don't forget I got that. What else have I got in here that I could use? Real nice. Maybe those bits. Oh, that's something I saw in there. Look at all this thread. Something. You know, sometimes you have things that just end up a big mess, but you can reuse them as something. I'm going to go like that for a start and see see what it does. See if it goes through. Won't know till I try. little bit, yep. Right, well, we're just tacking it down at the moment. I've got some white. Perhaps if I did it very, very super, super fine. So I'm still getting some of it. Are you thinking ocean? I am. That's, that's where I'm coming to from this. Top. 
top and see what it does on top of the white. I'm just tacking it down to see what I might like. This bit might be too big for me. How about I do that? I still like that it can do that in places. Can you hear the kookaburra outside? So I'm willing to have a go at most fibres to see what they will do. What else? This is green. This is a wool. Wool roving. I think this one might be silk. Maybe it's a silk wool blend because it is going through quite nicely. more blue. I think this is one I've hand dyed. Can you see how the ends of each curl have gotten more colour? But you know, what would happen if we pop that up in the sky? Could it suggest clouds and things in the gaps? Let's try. There's bits of things trapped in there. Don't want that. this white in as well. There's a few threads and things that don't belong. Let's drag them out. Coils are beautiful. So I will just keep 
layering up here. I'm using this lovely um, needle felting needle and uh, as long as I use things very sparsely you know very fine little bits and pieces it, it layers up beautifully into different tonal areas of this lovely blue and green and aqua seascape that we've got happening now you can see me punching away like mad there with this needle into the foam i've just got an ordinary piece of foam behind um, it is to stop the needle um, or to give the needle something to punch through into now, if you just tried that on a table you just uh, break your needle continually so um yeah i think that as long as you when you're stabbing the only other thing you really have to remember is to bring the needle out the same way that you went in don't try and push it into the sponge and then turn it and then bring it out because that will snap it but I might have gone on forever you know long 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 time and I haven't snapped any for years but uh, yeah it does happen when you're first starting off so beware of that now you can see me still going here and I'm adding some lighter colors towards the bottom I'm bringing darker colors towards the top, especially on that horizon line. I'll get to that soon. And we've got, uh, this one is a yarn, but it's pure wool. And it's um, just really, really great to pull it apart and use it. You get a lot of different uh, tonal colors in one ball of wool. This one goes variegated from green through to aquas and you know, even the through to a bronzy kind of colour. So I really love it. It's very useful. But this, I'm going to do the whole picture in, in greens and blues and aquas. A little, a little touch of purpley blue kind of t as well. And white. Um, whilst we're watching me just do a bit more here, I wanted to mention, do you remember the earlier kookaburra? that was calling over the video. Well, I just had to have a small break and I'll let you know I've had a lovely uh, wildlife kind of uh, experience because it was stuck in some vines, that kookaburra. So I went up on a ladder with my snips, snipped it free, held it in my hands, brought it down the ladder and it flew happily away. So good deed done. So here we are now with a little bit more turquoise and just sparingly adding those colours in. See how well it works and I'm so pleased with the way these things are punching through this linen that I had. So I've separated the sky from the sea. The sky is just in that more sky blue and uh, white and the linen itself that I'm punching through all these fibers through is uh, is more of a beigey kind of color so that gives me three different uh, variations of, of those colors in the sky I think it works pretty well and I'm liking the idea that you I don't have a solid edge see I'm not trying to finish it like that I like it sort of petering out in different places like waves rolling outside the edge of the actual picture so I thought I might bring a tiny spot of purple in but I decide not there I do want to keep those darker colors uh, towards the back but I'm just thinking a little bit here might might do me better and that's what you do you just if it really if it really bothered you if you once you'd punched it in you know you can just pull it straight off again so that's not a problem just try it try it in different ways but you'll find that you can use all of these things you know I've got those um, the threads and the wool and the silk roving and yarns and you know, bits of material, all kinds of things can be needle felted. And it's just such a wonderful medium and really, really good for working out aggression when you're needing to, you know, 
stow something repeatedly, this is the safest way to do it. Plus, you're being creative at the same time. A much uh, better use of your energy. And so this is still, you know, tacking. At the end, once I've got all of the colours down, I'll give it a proper good needling. But in the meantime, I've just pulled it off the sponge to show you the back and all of those fibres sort of meshed through, through that linen fabric. It's just marvellous how this um, works for a really nice uh, medium. How it works to layer the colours up. You get such beautiful variations. You can see here that I needed to flatten out that horizon. I want it to be a straight line, as a horizon is. So I'm using the tip of the needle to just drag the uh, fibres down where I wanted them and give them an extra little punch there so that they stay uh, in that new line. Oh, lovely. I can hear some thunder in the background. We're about to get a storm. So we'll finish up this video very soon. I am just doing a little bit of tweaking now. And I'm adding in some bits of a lighter color right down the bottom where those lighter colors might suggest the light coming through the waves where they crash to shore. So we could add in some white or very pale aqua or pale green just to suggest that kind of frothiness on the waves. And I'll put a little bit more of that in and uh, a little bit more white up in the clouds maybe. And uh, that'll be pretty well it. Look at those lovely lacy clouds going in now. We can even have part of that beigey background through, uh, show through because it's just like a, a more shadowed uh, version of the white clouds. So fill in some of the gaps that might still be in the sea or whatever that is going to speak to you. I'll use the needle again here to uh, spread some of that initial yarn that we put down. The one that was like a net and spread bits of it out. Tweak a bit more that horizon. It's uh, really good the way you can do that. As I said, lighter colours down the bottom. I'm just going to add some pale green and some white and you know a few colors like that just to suggest that lovely uh, look that you get when the sun is shining through a cresting wave. So I'd finish up with a little bit of white and see how I'm balling it up a little bit in sometimes that might be a, where I want a rounded area with the wave crests or I can tease it out into a line or I can use it sparingly, spread across, uh, spread across other things. And uh, so many, so many opportunities to play with this craft. I do believe it's one of my favorites. But here comes that storm getting closer. I'm gonna have to leave soon, so I just wanted to say I hope you did enjoy this video and if you have don't forget to press like, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time with something exciting, unusual, inspirational I hope. Thank you again for watching.